Hey girls, this is going to be my first video in our Get to Know Us series. This is just kind of going to be a series, a couple of videos explaining our history and kind of um, who we are basically because I know I have gotten a lot of new subscribers and I just wanted to do this series so that you guys can get to know us a little bit better. So um, for this video, this is going to be how we found out we were pregnant, our reactions and kind of what um, the whole story of that is. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. So in 2011, Dave and I were just dating at the time. We were together for a year and we had just moved in together. I went to a regular OB checkup with my obstetrician and um, based on his test results, he had seen that my um, hormones were a little bit elevated, my DHA, and he wanted to run more tests to kind of see why that was elevated. Um, he didn't seem too concerned about it and honestly I wasn't too concerned about it. I went back a week later and had an ultrasound done and more blood work done and he asked me a lot of questions, um, just kind of general questions like, you know, if I had any um, body hair, any, you know, missed periods or absent periods, um, if my horm my cycles were, um, if they were irregular, um, if I had any weight changes, kind of things like that. And um, I did, I did have a lot of um, facial hair issues, which I still have. And um, my cycles have never been regular, even if I was put on birth control or a different medication. Based on all those, all the questions that he'd asked me and my blood work and the ultrasound, he had told me that I had PCOS. And PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And it is the most common um, fertility issue in women. So um, he had told me that my chances of conceiving naturally on my own were slim to none. He said that I would most likely need to have fertility drugs to conceive. At that time, I was not, um, it was not in our plans to start trying. Um, we wanted to settle in more and, you know, get married and then have kids. We just, we weren't in a rush at all. He did put me on metformin because he did say that I had insulin resistance. I was devastated to know that um, I couldn't do what I was naturally born to do. I felt like damaged goods, but Dave reassured me and told me that um, we would, you know, cross that bridge when we need to and we would get through it together. So this kind of did, I tried to eat more healthier, I exercised a lot more, um, I was working all the time, so I was always on my feet. And I want to say um, about... September, October, I started to notice a little bit of change in me and I thought maybe it was just the metformin that I was on or the fact that I was working. I started to notice that I was getting more tired and I was having to use the restroom a lot more often and that was completely unlike me. I tried to have a glass of wine one night and it just tasted awful. I love wine so I knew something was up and I was just like, you know, maybe it's just my imagination. We ended up going to a bachelor party and for a weekend, so he was out of town and I was at home by myself. And I started to get this really sharp pain in my right side. At first it was just kind of like a dull pain and then it started to increase and it got to the point where I was like doubled over in pain and I was just like thinking, oh my God, I need to, maybe I need to go to the hospital. And I couldn't get a hold of Dave, I couldn't get a hold of my mom. So I ended up calling one of my friends and her and her boyfriend brought me to the hospital. My other friend showed up so that she could stay with me throughout this process to just see how, if I was okay. And in the waiting room, it literally felt like I was going to throw up. Like it was all in my right side, like all like in my right, right pelvic region. Doctors took me back and they started running blood work and asking me questions. And they're like, you know, um, we see that you were diagnosed with PCOS. Maybe this could be a cyst. Um, so they wanted to do an ultrasound to see um, if it was a cyst. And then they also did a urine test. Well, they did their urine test first. And, um, and then they had done the ultrasound. The doctor came in right after um, everything was taken care of and told me that I was pregnant. And I was like, I am what? <laughs> like... I was in shock. I was like, there's no way I can, I can be pregnant. I was, there's no way. And he had said that, um, based on the ultrasound that he saw some, uh, blood in my pelvic region and I had thought that it was an ectopic pregnancy, but there was no way to know for sure. Um, because my HCG levels were still in the early stages. I sent an OB in and they sent another specialist in and they looked over the results and kind of felt around in my abdomen and they had told me that 
based on their findings and kind of they did a more in-depth ultrasound they couldn't see anything um, in my uterus but a little sac um, they couldn't see like a fetal pole or anything on the second ultrasound they didn't want to immediately take action without knowing all the details. They did a vaginal ultrasound and from that findings they saw the little sac and they measured it to be about four weeks. The doctor had told me that um, not to worry that there wasn't anything in there yet because the because Dallas was so tiny at the time. They sent me home and told me to just rest up and to take care of myself and um, I had an I had an appointment a week later with my OB. A friend ended up bringing me home. Couldn't tell Dave yet. I was just kind of in shock, and I had to kind of let the whole night kind of just sink in and let me gather all my information. And honestly, a part of me was really scared because I knew that he wasn't ready to have children. I wasn't ready to be a mom. He wasn't ready to be a dad, and I was just really, really scared. So I called my mom first, and I told her. And um, she kind of talked me off the ledge pretty much um, because I was just in complete shock and I was freaking out and I just didn't know what to think. And I actually waited till Dave came home to tell him and I told him while he was at work, which, which is probably the worst time to tell somebody that kind of news, but I just couldn't hold it in anymore. And I told him and he was shocked at first, but surprisingly he took it a lot better than I thought he would I mean like he was actually really really excited and um, we ended up telling our whole family and everybody was like so excited and so supportive of us and it was just really good to kind of have that um, support with us and to feel that kind of love especially in that time because we weren't um, we weren't, you know, expecting that. So ended, up, ended up scheduling our gender ultrasound around 18 weeks. And, then, and it was actually around Christmas time that we did for our grandparents and parents and great grandparents is that we had um, my mother-in-law's boyfriend at the time um, make a video with the ultrasound pictures and announcing that it's a boy and what his name was. And um, we put it in like a little... Um, little box for them to have with just like um, popcorn and candy and things like that so they can watch it and everybody was so excited and they really liked the idea um, so that was a really cool way to announce his gender and name and thing was going really good um, I had just to have an appointment before that everything looked good Dallas looked healthy and he was moving all the time and just really help you know happy and I didn't feel any different at all well, a couple days later, um, I started spotting, and it, at first it was pretty light, and then it started to increase, and I just knew knew something was wrong. Dave drove me to the ER, and it was like in the middle of the night, and we get in, we get into the back of the room. They got me in really really quick, um, and they thought maybe it was um, placenta previa, where the placenta is kind of like lower, it's laying low and pressing on my cervix, and my cervix is just irritated and bleeding and things like that. They thought maybe it was something like that. Um, they said, you know, a lot of times this is just common, normal stuff, um, especially after having an ultrasound or a vaginal exam. And um, because I had an appointment, you know, a couple days prior, they thought maybe that was why. They had an ultrasound tech come in and they were messing around on my belly. I could just tell by the way, the way she was kind of looking at the ultrasound and like really pressing on my stomach that something was wrong. We're waiting for the doctor for, you know, ever for them to come in and tell us what was wrong. I ended up sending in a student or resident um, obstetrician and he told us that I'm, I'm three centimeter, two to three centimeters dilated and um, there was really nothing that they could do. They pretty much told us that I would go into labor and Dallas wouldn't be able to live outside the room because he was only 18 weeks at the time and they pretty much told me it was doom and gloom and you know there was nothing that I could do and they kept me overnight just in case I went into labor and I begged them to do something I was like can't you you know just do something because you know is there something that you can do and they just kept telling me no no there's nothing we can do or we're sorry you know you're just gonna have to read this out or whatever well they ended up calling my, my OB and my OB had told me to stay on bed rest um, he said not to get up for anything, absolutely nothing. Um, I couldn't shower without a shower chair. I couldn't go to the bathroom without having a um, bedpan or like a little side, uh, 
a mobile commode. Um, I, I pretty much could only get up to go to the bathroom and shower for two minutes and go to doctor's appointments. And we did that for a week and then I ended up in, back in the hospital because I felt more pressure down there. I literally felt like Dallas was, was coming out and um, they sent me up to the OB triage this time instead of just in the regular ER. And another resident doctor come in and then another OB come in and she was really upset that I was told that there was nothing that they could do. And she was actually, um, she actually did her, the OB, the OB, not the resident, actually did her residency um, in the other hospital that I ended up getting transferred to. Really upset that I was told that there was nothing they could do. Um, so she had called the other hospital where my, um, my maternal fetal medicine doctor was resided and she had sent me an appointment up with her and, um, so I ended up going, I ended up going to that hospital that night and I said, I stayed over in that hospital till the next morning so I could see my MFM doctor, which was a specialist and, um, they did a vaginal exam and they also did an ultrasound with an amniosis to make sure that um, there was no genetic reasons uh, or genetic, genetic problems or anything with Dallas or any infection um, as to why my body was starting to go into labor. That and they said the results came back normal, um, at, I think it was like 24 hours after that and she had said that um, Based on that, that she really wants to do a rescue cerclage or rescue stitch, which is where they place a, um, like a really thick, uh, like merceline, um, kind of threading in my cervix to pull it shut. So pretty much to get, buy him time until he was able to live outside the womb. The goal was 24 weeks, um, that Dallas could make it 24 weeks and, um, the surgery was really scary. I was awake during it and... Um, because I had fetal limb exposure and my bag of waters were bulging out of my cervix, they had to push it back up with this balloon. And that was probably the most scariest, I've, like, the most scared I've ever been in my life. Because I knew that if my water did break during surgery that there would most likely be a chance that Dallas wouldn't live. And we were faced with the decision of what we were going to do as far as um, his funeral arrangements and if we were going to cremate him or bury him and I always get really emotional thinking about that because we were pretty much told if this went the other way we'd have we needed to have those plans set just in case and um, thankfully by the grace of God that didn't happen and um, I ended up the surgery ended up going really well and um, I was placed at better again at home um, basically the same way it was before I had the cerclage done. And well, my MFM doctor and my regular OB um, twice a week and um, I did that for a while. And then um, towards the last um, MFM appointment that I had, I was about 27 weeks and um, I started to feel more pressure like the day of the appointment. And I had mentioned that to my doctor and she had said, well, it's probably just, you know, normal because he's getting bigger and there's obviously more weight down um, in your pelvic pelvis, pelvic area. Um, so she just kind of sent me home. Um, that night, my water ended breaking and um, I was rushed to, the, rushed to the nearest hospital, which ended up transferring me by ambulance to my MFM doctor was the, the specialist hospital with the level 3 NICU. When I was getting into the ambulance, I didn't, I wasn't having any contractions. I didn't feel any labor pains or anything like that. I just could tell my water was leaking profusely. By the time I got to the other hospital, I started to have contractions and they were getting painful. Um, and I was put on a magnesium drip, drip, antibiotics, and then some other medication. I don't remember what it was called. I knew that I would be there until I gave birth to him, even though my water had already broke and I was given antibiotics um, just just in case. And the reason why they didn't want to um, they didn't want me to go on labor was because the risk of pre prematurity outweighed the risk of infection at the time. And um, they said as long as my blood work came back normal, um, then they would let me they would let my body go as long as it could. I would get daily blood draws not only for um, my gestational diabetes, but for um, infection and kind of things like that. I was monitored twice a day. 
Um, and they would put the monitors on um, Dallas to make sure that he had a good heart rate and that he was moving a lot. Um, I think I only got one other ultrasound and that was just to kind of see how much fluid I had left. And I think at that point I only had like two centimeters of fluid.